Hey guys, this is Camfrey15, back at it with another video for you guys, and I'm back with another Ari Fuweta episode review for you guys. And this was a good episode. Also, again, um, foreshadowing with the uh, events at the end of this episode, um, what where the story could potentially be going. But honestly, to goodness, this episode was kind of chill this week. Um, other than really the somewhat of the start of it, we kind of, we we get it essentially obviously with the events taking place last week. Tio gets back to the main village where Kaiori and Mew are at. Um, she flies down. I found it pretty interesting that the um, the that the um, how can I say the men who were in the army um, for this um, village. They thought Teal was like coming to attack, but when Teal deformed, they're like, oh, it's a woman and everything. Kari showed up and she ended up being worried. She's like, whoa, 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 wait. Where's uh, Yue, Shea, and Hajime? Um, and obviously, um, Teal is like, listen, they'll be back and everything. They just said, he just told me not to worry and everything. Um, he'll be back and we'll see him again. So obviously, that's the whole thing. Now, we find out what happened after Teal left. So what happened was um because we find them out they had gotten out um but we find out what they did is they went to the one area they needed to go into they grabbed the talisman thing that they had to grab um and well they were like okay we're gonna be stuck here and how are we gonna get out of here and that's when hunchman's like we're gonna literally swim through lava and freaking shares like what are you talking about um, and I found it hilarious because Hajime is like, don't give me that look. Um, but what how but anyways, thanks to Yue, um, they make like some sort of force field barrier to protect them from the lava. Hajime was like, Oh, thank goodness this worked, otherwise we'd probably be dead right now. Um also we do find out he actually made himself a submar submarine that is able to uh swim through the lava or um go through the lava um and everything which was pretty dope again like i said some of these inventions i see are these be these like i guess you can say vehicles they're just so cool um and everything but you know what happens is essentially they freaking are in it the thing's getting them dragged under because it's taking them underwater um to an underwater volcano essentially they eventually get to the underwater volcano pop out and then they're at where they're at and they're on top of a um they're on or well what happens is they get followed by these i guess these shark things they fire some weapons off you know eventually they're out of ammo but then shay uh not shaya um ua essentially um uses her magic but she ends up getting drained and everything um you know she doesn't have anything Hajime is like, listen, take my blood, but you know, you always like, I can't do that because you're badly wounded and everything. Um, and that's when Shea is like, you can take my blood um, and everything. And we we not, and then we when we cut back to the present because they eventually get out of there. Um, also, too, when they were just discussing this, uh, you and Hajime just decided to do it. Yes, they did the dirty on top of their ship. Listen, no objections. Um, you can do wherever you want to do it. I don't care. Um, but I found it hilarious how Yue is like, where Hajime is like, are you sure this was a good, good idea? And um, Yue is like, yeah, I took so much of Shea's blood. She is, she'll be out for a while. Lo and behold, Shea wakes up and she's like, so what was going on here, huh? And they just look and Shea is just like, okay, yeah, okay. I, Hajime, you promised me. I thought you were gonna. Well, she didn't. He didn't promise her, but we know that Shea wants to have Hajime's children, essentially, um, which is hilarious. But um, whatever. Um, that that was the whole thing. And essentially, what happens is they end up um, being attacked by um, Mew's people, the fish people, and everything. Um, but. Obviously, they kind of swat them away. I found it funny. He hits him one with a freaking fish. And they're literally trying to tell him, hey, listen, we got your dog. We got Mew. We're going to take her back and everything. Also speaking, um, um, Tio and Kyori get made the decision to go find um, um, Mew's home and everything because since it's close by and everything. So 
eventually what happens is you hear mute saying papa papa um and she's literally flying through the air well not flying but she's like free falling through the air and hanuman is like what the fuck um <laughs> and he ends up catching her and everything um that was a funny scene and he's like listen just don't do it again because you scared me um essentially what happens is the rest of the episode is where they go back to um muse hometown um i guess you can say you you, the the leader of this of little town um is like okay thank you for doing this request and everything we'll ask you about questions and pertaining to Mew and how you got her and everything later and stuff like that but for the meantime enjoy yourselves and everything people leave these people alone and stuff like that so yeah um that's also when um Mew ends up you know being taken back to her mom we find out her mom's kind of been looking for her for a long time um she has these guys and her i guess her one girlfriend I was like, listen, take your time. You know, you don't need to do all this. But then all of a sudden, Mew's like, mama, you know, I'm back and everything. And obviously she's happy and everything, you know. And then Mew's like, hey, mom, meet my dad. And she's like, dad. Um, And she sees this and she's, and obviously she's like, wait, why is she calling you dad or papa? Like, it, it reminds me of the time when freaking Kyori at the end of season one heard <laughs> when Mew called him Papa. And she was like, what the hell is going on here? Um, that was funny. The mother wasn't as dramatic like Kyori was about that. But she was just like, why are you calling the strange man Papa? I also found it funny how in the background her friends were like, wait. Papa, wait, she has a new husband? Uh, You know? No, wait, husband? I'm supposed to be the husband. And then this one, she's like, no, I'm supposed to be the husband. But we kind of find out the reason why the girl wants to be husband because she kind of wants Mew's mom to be single until she finds a new, I guess, mate. And uh, we end up, uh, Kyra ends up healing a little bit more of her injured leg and everything. We find out she was injured in the attack when they took Mew away and everything um and essentially Hajime is like look you know we're gonna be in town for a bit so um yeah but we're going to freaking leave i'm gonna go fix on the ship and everything but we got a place to stay you don't need to worry about it because the mother's like hey you know thank you for bringing my daughter back you know i'll i promise i'll treat you something um i'll get i'll, I'll give you something in return for that i'm like hey i'm like Hajime come on my guy it's a it's a i know it's a it's a fish lady but she's kind of cute you might as well slide into that you know what and you might as well get the dirty on um but the funny thing is about hajime is like nah i I can't and because the mama asked him like you can stay here and everything i'm like oh she wants it she wants it her daughter's calling this dude papa she this dude saves her daughter What's a good way to give uh, somebody a treat? Yeah, sleep with them. Um, but I found it hilarious how um, <laughs> when, eventually when it comes to the part when she's like, yeah, I, I would like to offer my life to you. Essentially a generic way of saying, if you want to sleep with me, you can. Um, that's what I would like. Um, but I found it hilarious because all they focus on Kyrie and the other girls and they're like, oh, Another girl added to your little harem. Huh? Okay. We're just going to be right here and you're just going to be smitten with this one chick. Okay. We'll be right here waiting. It's funny because Hajime's like, uh, I don't think that's a good idea, even if this is a joke. Because uh, I got a lot of cold eyes on me because they know all these girls are going to kill him because they're, they're like, another one? Good God, man. Can you stop with this? Um... So yeah, I can't wait to see Kyra's reaction. The fact that the teacher is smitten with uh, him too. Um, that's going to be funny um, and everything. So that was cute and adorable. Just seeing that um, whole thing. Again, like I said, um, the mother. I don't know if the mother's going to join his little harem. I don't think he's gonna, she's going to like join the party party. But I think she could be like some sort of freaking... Um, I guess in his harem just from where she stays at and I guess you can say presumably um her and Hajime are married because the before she's talking all this um 
you know, she's um, Mew's mother's like, you're gonna stay, you know, with your daughter, right? She is your daughter. I'm like your pa, and she's telling you, she's like, you want your papa to stay, right? She's like, she's like, and then she tells, <laughs> she's like, papa should stay, and she gives that type of look where it's like, you better freaking stay, otherwise I'm, otherwise you're going to die by my hands. So, in a presumed way, seemingly enough. This Mew's mother and Hajime are now an item now. Okay, I'll take it. Fine. Um, which is hilarious. Which is hilarious. We actually do find out Mew actually does have a biological dad. It's just um, we find out Mew's mom is a widow um, because uh, Mew's uh, husband died five years ago. Um, but after that scene, we you get a cut over to that to the uh, guys. That were just observing in this scene because they're like, why is this guy freaking in her house? And like, then he's gonna freaking get her. Um, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> they cut back after she says, she's like, Papa should stay. And he, he overhears, he turns his head and they're like, oh shit, something we need to start in a meeting. This is gonna be rough. The news is gonna be rough, man. And I'm like, bro, these guys had some sort of freaking coalition meeting just to see who's gonna be the next person to marry this girl um and when he said i had to play that back a second time because these dudes were like shit damn it the news is gonna be rough get the guys together i'm like oh my god <laughs> that was hilarious i honestly was dying of pure laughter when they said that because they were like fuck we lost our chance. This one guy, this guy shows up out of nowhere, brings her daughter back, and now we lost all hope. We can't get her now. He's already essentially married to this girl. Which essentially, like I said, it's... I, I, I guess you could say it's kind of an elopement here. They eloped Hajime and this, this um, fish girl just because he brought Mew back and Mew's calling him dad and everything and stuff like that. And she's like, well, if, I'm the mama, you're only the papa, so it only makes sense that I guess we're together in this. Um, so, um, yeah, um, Hajime's in a way now married. Okay, okay. Um, and anyways, the episode ends off with Shizuku's wondering what the uh, king's a uh, ruling about um, Hajime is because we know from last week from what Princess what the princess was saying she was saying that essentially hajime could be branded as a heretic we actually see the return of the teacher yes sensei yes sensei i remember sensei from season one i thought she was adorable she was cute hot yeah whatever um and it was funny because obviously they're talking a bit like about what hajime did for her and everything well not truly she kind of hides things and everything the teacher's kind of just saying like, hajime is kind of different you know and everything you know he might have remembered his whole you know his student stuff and everything and then we see her on the side she's getting rarely flustered and everything because she has a thing for hajime um which i'm like i already knew the teacher was going to be added to this harem bro i knew this teacher was going to be added to this harem she's quietly fallen for hajime her student now if you have any problems with that well personally if you ask me uh <coughs> you can kick rocks there's another anime currently going on in Worlds and Harem where literally in Worlds and Harem, a student is sleeping with his own teacher in that show. If you want to know the details of why, either go check out my reviews or you go freaking watch the anime yourself before you put out to judge. Listen, it's anime. I don't care. Japan is weird with all this crap. I just got to, I'm watching the English dub for freaking, um, what is it? Um, World's Finest Assassin. Um, spoilers for that show. You find out freaking Lou does, has to kill this girl he's really into, but we later find out, oh, guess what? This girl um, has ties to Lou's mother, and lo and behold, they're distant cousins, but they're still in love with each other, which is weird, but in that time period, who cares? And it's anime. Listen, Japan always does weird stuff like that. That's why the same people, these are the same people in this, in this country that is willing to hook up, try to find a way to hook up or have some sort of romantic relationship between Kirito and his sister slash cousin um, in Sugu. Like, okay, I don't care, whatever. 
anyways um yeah so teachers is definitely into our boy hajime makes sense she quietly fell for him because she saved him and then she just saw the difference and stuff like that and plus he's a lot taller and everything she's like oh my goodness uh, i can't contain myself i'm like this teacher is crazy i'm like if this teacher literally sees hajime again she might actually sleep with this guy oh uh, i'm like oh my goodness Anyways, now we can add Teacher to the harem because Teacher is infatuated him. We already know Shizuku has some sort of thing for him too um, because we saw the end of episode one. I found it hilarious because Shizuku's like, Hajime, what did you do to Aichan? And I'm like, um, he essentially kind of uh, flirted a bit and she was, whatever, I don't care. Anyways, the teacher goes on to say, yeah, we got bad news. Apparently, um, the king has branded Hajime as a heretic, which is not good because that means the royal capital are going to be after him. And they're essentially see him as somebody that goes against the church um, and, any, uh, and everything. Um, but the sensei brings up the good, brings up the point about this. The fact like, well, the officials and the king, well, they typically listen to whatever I say. Whatever I say overrules what they they sh are going what they what pertains to the thing about our students and everything. And Hajime is one of my students, so I can literally overrule that and say you can't label him as a heretic. Um, but she goes on to say the thing of the difference is they looked oddly different. Or you know the look in their eyes was like not different. So. I have a feeling somebody's controlling them to make them brand um, Hajime as a heretic. I wouldn't be shocked if it's this lady that is trying to have this one of the classmates try to kill Hajime is behind this whole thing. Um, she did some sort of hypnosis thing to say, brand how you know Hajime is a heretic to make it easier for him to be on the run so we can try to kill him and stuff like that. Um, so... Yeah, that's gonna be very interesting. I think it has some ties to do with that. Obviously, Shizuku's like, what the hell is going on here and everything? Um, also, too, the sensei brings up the topic of the fact, yeah, we need to get together as a class because I have something I need to tell you about um, and everything, um, which I think is in response to the fact that um, Hajime, if you remember from season one, Hajime told her, listen, somebody in the class is a clearly a traitor and you know they're trying to do something um to try to kill us all um so i think that's the thing that she's going to talk about the whole traitor storyline with the student now we know who the traitor is as the viewer we know the traitor essentially is this one student trying to kill hajime um well at the time time at the same time we also knew there was another student in season one who ended up dying um was a traitor and everything but um yeah, but um, this is getting very interesting. I found the funny enough, it's the funny business with the sensei s essentially smitting or falling over um, over Hajime as well as Mew's mother essentially hooking up with Hajime in an eloping, in an elope type of way, I guess you can say, just because, well, Mew's calling him Papa and she's her mom, so... He's married now, and this is the disappointment to many. Um, again, um, whatever. But um, anyways, um, I enjoyed this episode. If you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode of Ari Fuweta. Hit, um, put in the comment section um, your thoughts of this week's episode. Again, do not post spoilers for what happens next in the storyline. Anime only. As well as hit the subscribe button to get more... Um, Ari Fuweta content, as well as any other of the Winter of Anime 2022 content. Other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day or night. I'm going to check out this video. Until then, guys, catch you guys later. Peace.